Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are from the upcoming Cedar Rapids Opera production of Pirates of Penzance, but spoiler alert, not your dad's Pirates of Penzance. <laughs> uh, Alex Adams Latus is with us. Alex, welcome. Thank you. And Emlyn Shoemaker, nice to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. So before we start uh, talking about the show and specifically, uh, tell me a little bit about yourselves. Uh, Alex, you are, where are you from? I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> and uh, uh, born and raised there. I went to college at uh, uh, St. John's University in Collegeville, Minnesota, and then did a master's in vocal performance at the University of Minnesota. Okay, and uh, and uh, Le- Le- do you, are you based somewhere, or are you living the itinerant life of the uh, touring uh, um, opera singer? I'm technically still based in Minneapolis. Uh, I actually substitute teach when I'm home and do it and not doing opera work, but uh, and obviously sometimes are richer than others when it comes to gig <laughs> opportunities, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> Got a few things coming up. Things are opening back up, and That's I'm right. home less and less often these days. But yes, I am technically yeah. still based in Minneapolis. And Emily, how about you? Yeah, so I was born and raised. No, I wasn't. Oh my gosh. I was sorry. I'm born in Georgia, <laughs> but I was raised in Pendleton, South Carolina. Um, I'm sure you don't know where that is. But um, I went to undergrad at Presbyterian College. If you know, you know. Um, and then I got my master's at University of Kansas. And now I'm based in Chicago. So okay. I kind of just did a little and you have some, hop. And, and you have some, and, you, and uh, you, this is your second time here performing with the opera, but you mm-hmm. have some connections here. Yes, I have locally. a few connections, yeah. my people. <laughs> okay, well, I don't need, boy, I don't even know where to start with Pirates of Pentads. <laughs> there is just so much to unpack here. Uh, I've read Gregory Keller, the stage director, his, his notes on this, so I have a little background coming in. I recommend that highly by the way, on the uh, CROpera.org website. I guess let's start with the very model of a modern major general who is a different model than we have ever seen before. Quite. (laughs) Yes, indeed. (laughs) So, um, Alex, give us the thumbnail sketch of uh, what is different about this, uh, this edition of Gilbert and Sullivan, among others. Well, so normally the major general, it was meant to be a satire on the hierarchy of British society at that time. And actually, our director, uh, Gregory Keller, mentioned to us the other night that he he was originally based on a specific major general in the British Army. I believe it was, I can't remember if it's Wolseley or Wolsey. Um, A well-known character of the time. Yes, yes. So your typical depiction is going to be very stereotypically British and very proper and pretty much talking about everything he knows about and is an expert on, which is everything except the one area that he's supposed to be an expert in. And, but uh, in this particular case, we are doing New York style and... So set in Staten Island, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And this major general is a major mafia general. Which means uh, I got a I got an email a few months ago <laughs> specifying that they wanted me to do Joe Pesci style a la Goodfellas. Okay. So uh, right. I have to give a little uh, shout out to my old buddy Christopher Smith back in Minnesota who finally showed me the movie Goodfellas, uh, insisting that I saw it after many years of talking about it, and and my friends were constantly quoting some lines from that, uh, but. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a, uh, a bit of a learning curve there, trying to uh, <laughs> trying to invoke old Joe Pesci from uh, Goodfellas as uh, as my major general character. So, as you have now figured out, um, the you know the concept is it's it's not Britain in the 19th century. We it's Staten Island. We mentioned the mob. Uh, Edith, when does this show take place? Early 80s. Okay. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the early 80s. I you know sex drugs rock and roll is kind of the picture i've gathered from all of the the acting work we've done over the past week so yeah that's what it means and we're the mobsters daughters and we're 
little cocky, a little arrogant, and exploring what we have the means to explore. Uh, as... Kind of the American princess. Exactly. And the pirates are... Bad boys. And... We're very excited about them. And, but also uh, kind of nervous. And punk rockers, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, okay, so the pirates are punk rockers. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the the women are, you know, schoolgirls. Mm-hmm. The major general is a mobster. What could yes. possibly go wrong? <laughs> Quite a bit. Nothing. <laughs> so it just it just sounds like a riot. Now I so uh, any changes? I mean, is the 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 libretto and the lyrics? Uh, you haven't played with any of that, every or have you? There's a couple little references, okay. like in 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 one of the last couple of lines that the major general says. Um, in the original edition, it's. Uh, because with all our faults, we love our house of peers. They're referencing the parliament. Right. And uh, apparently on this one, they're asking us to change house of peers to goyles and queers. <laughs> <laughs> our queen. Oh, that, that Our too. queen that is a, a queen. Oh, like okay. Like a, a New sure. York queen. Okay. Whereas yeah. in the right. in the original, of course, it was a reference to Queen Victoria. <laughs> right. And that, yeah. and that they yeah. all have a particular, yeah. the one thing they all have in common, both sides, is a loyalty to Queen Victoria. Right. But uh, in this case, it's going to be a very different queen. Our, exactly. So so <laughs> what did uh, what did you both think when you first got the word that uh, this this show that you had auditioned, this, this Gilbert and Sullivan operetta that you had auditioned for was going to be way, way different than you probably imagined it. Uh, I, I've actually done a few Gilbert and Sullivan shows. I did HMS Pinafore and, um, oh gosh, The Gondoliers. And both times we changed quite a bit of the lyrics. Um, so I wasn't surprised that that was happening. It's kind of the practice to adapt with the current climate, whatever we are trying to address. And so I just, I remember um, we talked about Donald Trump in one of them. Mm. It, it was <laughs> it was kind of strange because we were dressed in that traditional attire that you would imagine it being. Oh, okay. So you're dressed, period. Yeah. But it, so this is so this kind of, it's kind of the opposite here. Right. Dressed, period, change the words. Right. And in this case, total different. Both. Period. Yeah, both. Yeah, both. <laughs> Uh, Alex, what uh, what was your reaction? Well, aside from oh my gosh, I have to learn how to do Joe Pesci. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely saying I gotta watch Goodfellas again. But uh, well, I I am normally kind of an unabashed traditionalist when it comes to opera, particularly when it comes to Mozartian opera. I basically got my start in opera just by being raised by a mother for whom Mozart is something only slightly less than a religion, and I've kind of internalize that so I'm a little skeptical of doing this sort of thing with a lot of operas it depends on the nature of it I would like I would never want to see it done to something like Marriage of Figaro or Don Giovanni Magic Flute I see those as a little more sacred but for something like this that was intended to be satire in the first place I think it actually works quite well Mm -hmm. I don't think it's I don't think it's something that we should be doing universally with opera but it does have its place and i think this type of show is that place well in gregory's notes he specifically said this was written as a as a satire on things that the people who saw it when it was new would they they would recognize the jokes Mm -hmm. exactly yes why are we why are we doing 150 year old jokes yes that none of us get yes makes yeah makes perfect sense um so tell me about the costumes in the set we you know i i have an image (laughs) My favorite part is dressing him and his entrance. He enters with his like house coat and bedroom slippers on, and we have bear to- claw bedroom bear slippers. Claw. By the way, <laughs> it's hilarious. And we undress him and then redress him in his mob outfit, and we, you know, it's it's quite hilarious. Striped suit, let- big lapels. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, down to the shoes, down uh-huh. to the shoes, and the. There, it's just it's a hoot. A hoot and a half. I was I was a little <laughs> nervous the other day in in rehearsal when uh, actually Emlyn tells me I have to actually sit on her for a moment <laughs> on that, and I'm not exactly a little guy, so I was a I'm little a concerned. strong lady, okay. <laughs> but I'm on all fours, and he sits on me and takes off his slippers. It's it's funny. It is. Have you now? I have you visited the you know the outdoor set where you're going to be yet have you seen that we will saturday oh, okay mm-hmm. uh do you have a sense of what the set's going to look like 
We have it taped out on the floor. I think it's proportionally a little smaller, so I think we're going to have much more space. We're going to play in the grass some. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, we haven't mentioned this is the this is the the opera theater's outdoor show at Bruce Moore on the Peggy Whitworth stage, which mm-hmm. uh, is uh, one of our just you know one one of the best places. It's a natural amphitheater uh, rebuilt since the derecho. It's just uh, oh, wow. it's yeah, it's just a great it's a great space. I'm excited. Yeah. I am. Um, and of course we can, you know, punk rockers, we can kind of, we can kind of have a, have a sense of what that's going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, at what other liberties, I guess, have you mentioned, you need to, Alex, you mentioned just changing a couple of lines in the, <laughs> in the major general song. Uh, what other, you know, for those of us who, you know, have varying degrees of familiarity with, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan, what other things have changed? I wouldn't say necessarily changed other than, you know, the imagery and a few of the lyrics. But I will say that every single innuendo that you could possibly find within the text. Um, in, the, is... in the 150 year old text. Exactly. <laughs> they were they were disgusting 150 years ago. OK. And so we pull that to the front and, you know, make that known that that's what right. they were saying. All right. They were way dirtier <laughs> than you thought. <laughs> Back in the Victorian era, <laughs> they sure were. <laughs> the more repressed they are, the more uh, <laughs> the more simmers below the surface, right? True. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I know that you're. You know, everything's still kind of coming together, mm-hmm. but and without spoiling things too much, um, Emlyn, do you have a favorite moment in the show right now? Hmm, that's a good question. I would say <laughs> the my favorite moment is right after Mabel enters and we're kind of pissed off because she stole the man yet again. Um, We have this scene where we're trying to cover up what they're doing um, because we don't know when our father's going to arrive and it's kind of this controlled chaos. Oh, sure. Slamming doors. Running into each other. Trying, you know, like, it's really funny. I, it's exhausting though. I'm out of breath by the end of it. (laughs) Alex, same question. Um, I think it probably has to be what we staged just yesterday in rehearsal in reference to... So the Major General makes use of the fact that this rollicking band of pirates who try to be so intimidating have this <laughs> one particular soft spot, which is that they're, they're all orphans. So if anyone says that they are an orphan themselves, they take pity on them and let them go. So, of course, the word gets out about this, and everybody they capture claims to be an orphan. <laughs> and so the, this, this mafia major general decides he's going to use the same trick. But... Even even Mafia Dons have some sort of conscience. And uh, <laughs> the Major General is quite uh, tormented by his conscience. <laughs> and we had a scene yesterday where I am he- holding a, what do they call it? A cat of nine tails. And a bullwhip. Oh, okay. And, a bull whip. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and uh, literally flagellating myself uh, for, for the crime of... Uh, of telling such a <laughs> uh, such an abominable falsehood. I thought that was hilarious the other day because I, I referred to the director saying, well, I'm actually Jewish. I'm what you call maybe the most pro-Catholic <laughs> Jew in the world, but, uh, but that pro-Catholicism does not extend to the practice of flagellation. But, <laughs> um, but I did find that a rather hilarious moment to be doing that on stage. I but, definitely and, put that out of my mind yesterday. I forgot about that. <laughs> and cracking the bullwhip when Frederick wants to, uh, wants to marry one of my daughters. There's a scene where, uh, where he starts to go towards her, and I crack the bullwhip to keep him from, uh, from, from coming any closer. So much to unpack here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I said at the top of the interview, not your dad's Pirates of the Penzance. Uh, <laughs> just sounds, it just sounds like a blast. See our opera. It's the uh, Pirates of Penzance, uh, June 16th through the 18th, on the grounds at Bruce Moore in the great Peggy Whitworth stage. Uh, tickets available from the opera website, which is cropera.org. Uh, Emlyn, Alex? Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And uh, gosh, have fun with it. I can't be, which is not going to be difficult to do. No, not at all. <laughs> it is so fun. It is. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or however you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green and I'll talk to you later.